Welcome to worship with us again today. Dobrodojdete na bogosluženjeto sa nas deneska. Jesus told his disciples to wait for the power of the Holy Spirit. Isus im kaže na učiste da čeka za da se izlije sveti od duh. That they would receive power when the Holy Spirit came upon them. I koji će dojde sveti od duh ti će prima sila. So as we worship the Lord today on Pentecost Sunday. I kako što go slavime gospoda deneska v ova nedala nedala na pedesetnjstva. Then let's call upon God to pour out his spirit upon us. Neka da se pomolimo i da poparamo da Bog poizlije sveti od duh vrz nas. And to empower us to serve and worship him in the power of the spirit. I da ni dade sila da mu služime sa silata na sveti od duh. Let's pray. Neka da se pomolimo. Father, we thank you for your great love for us. Tatko ni te blagodarame za tvojata golema ljubav za nas. And we thank you for everything the, that Jesus did for us. I ni te blagodarame za sve ono što Isus napravi za nas. We thank you that you've conquered sin and death. Ni te blagodarame što ti pobedi grevo i smrtta. And that you've made us your children. I što ti ne napravi nas da vidimo tvoji deca. That we might share joys in eternity with you. Da ni možemo da uživamo radost Thank you also, Father, for giving us the Holy Spirit. Tatko nisto tak ti blagodarame što ti go imaš dano na nas sveti od duh. That during these years upon the earth. Da za vreme na ovije godine do deka smena zemljata. We have the ministry of the Spirit to strengthen us. Da možeme da sveti od duh da ne zajaknova nas. And to empower us to serve you faithfully. I da ne dade sila da ti služime verno na tebe. Lord, pour out your Spirit upon us. Gospodi, izdaj go Tvojo duh vrz nas. Fill us with your spirit. Ispolni nas so Tvojo duh. And give us eyes to see the wonders of what you have done. I daj ni oči, da možeme da gi videme čudnite nešta što Ti gi napravi. And all that we can do through the power of the spirit. I se ono što ni možeme da napravime preko silata na duhot. Be glorified in each of us, we pray. Bidi proslaven vo vseko jeden od nas, te moleme. In Jesus precious name. Vo dragoceno to ime Isusovo. Amen. Amen. Today as we celebrate the Pentecost Sunday. Deneska je den od kojeg proslavujeme koji se rika pedesetnica. Let me take you on a bit of a journey to understand where the whole idea of Pentecost came from. Neka da bi objasnimo kada ova ideja za pedesetnice i velike izlivanje po svetu duh dolaja. It was a feast that was put in place through Moses on Mount Sinai. To beše praznik koji beše kažan od Mojsej na planinu planinu ta Sinai. The first feast that the children of Israel were meant to celebrate we call Passover. Prvi od praznik što decata izraelski trebaše da go proslavova beše Paskata. And that's when we celebrate Jesus as our Passover lamb. Then after Passover, they had to measure seven weeks. That's 49 days. And the day after those 49 days, on the 50th day, they would have another whole celebration, another feast. And so this was called the Feast of Pentecost. Of course, they also called it the Feast of Weeks because it was seven weeks after Passover. And it happened to coincide with the wheat harvest. So on these special feasts, all of the men had to come to Jerusalem to be able to worship God in the temple. And then there was a third feast when they had to come to Jerusalem. And that was the Feast of Tabernacles. So they had to, for a whole week, live in little tents that they had built for themselves. And that was to remember their time going through the wilderness and living in tents for those 40 years. Now, Christians look at those feasts and they see that they have very real significance for us. Because during the Feast of Passover, we remember Jesus as our sacrifice. 
То е времето кога Исус постана паскалното јагне жртва за нас. And then it was on the day of Pentecost that the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the disciples. Тогаш на денот на педесетицата, тогаш беше кога Светиот Дух се изли врз учениците и врз нас. But Christians don't tend to think much about that third feast, that feast of tents or tabernacles. Но Христијаните многу не размислуваат и луѓето обично не размислуваат за третиот празник, празникот на шатори. Its significance seems to be a, a signal of a time when God will bring the Jews and the Gentiles together to worship Him. So as we think about the day of Pentecost and the giving of the Holy Spirit, we think of the words of John the Baptist when he was foreshadowing Jesus coming. And in Mark chapter 1 and verse 8 we have the record where John said to the people, I baptize you with water but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And, and the word baptize means to, to dip into the water. It's to, to completely immerse something in, in some liquid. So what uh, John the Baptist was saying is, I'm lowering you into the water and you're getting completely covered by water. But Jesus, or the Christ that's coming, he's going to lower you into the Holy Spirit and you'll be completely covered with the Spirit of God. Now, Jesus referred to the Holy Spirit multiple times during his ministry. And we know that he operated in the power of the Holy Spirit. When he was baptized, the Holy Spirit came down upon him in the form of a dove. And then uh, after he was tempted, he went into the uh, synagogue and he read from Isaiah saying, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And we realize that all of the works that Jesus did, he did by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then in John chapter 14, verse 17, Jesus spoke to his disciples. And he talked to them about the Holy Spirit, calling the Holy Spirit the Spirit of Truth. He said, the world cannot receive the Spirit of Truth because it doesn't see Him, it doesn't know Him. But Jesus said, you know Him because He is with you and He will be in you. So Jesus was saying, you know the Spirit of Truth, because Jesus carried that Spirit Himself. And He is, he is with you, He's part of your traveling party. But the Spirit of God will come inside you. And then we find that uh, a rather remarkable thing happened after Jesus rose from the dead. You'll recall that on the day that Jesus did rise from the dead, in that evening, the disciples had gathered together. Various people had reported that they'd actually met Jesus during that day. And there was a lot of uncertainty and doubt about what was happening. And John tells us in John chapter 20 in verse 19 that when the disciples were together, 
And the doors were locked because they were afraid of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. And Jesus revealed himself to the disciples in many different ways. He rebuked them for their unbelief. But significantly, we are told in verse 22 that he breathed on them. And he said to them, receive the Spirit. He had told them that the Holy Spirit was with them and the Holy Spirit would be in them. And now, after Jesus has risen from the dead, he then imparts the Spirit into them. Now, people who think about that theologically, that they will say that that's the time that the disciples were born again. They couldn't put faith in Jesus for their salvation until Jesus had risen from the dead. And when we are born again, we receive the Holy Spirit. So that was their moment of becoming, as it were, a believer in Jesus. And yet after that, we told by some of the other gospel writers, that the disciples were still to wait for the Holy Spirit. Dr. Luke records for us in Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. That Jesus said to the disciples, don't leave Jerusalem. But wait for the Spirit my Father promised. The gift of God which you heard from me. For John baptized you with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So John the Baptist had said he is going to baptize you in the Spirit. And then Jesus had breathed on the disciples and said, Receive the Spirit. But that experience of receiving the Spirit was not the fulfillment of what God was going to do. There was an experience of the Holy Spirit yet to happen to the disciples. We could call it being baptized in the Spirit. Even though they already had the Spirit. And in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus explained to them, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And so you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea. And in Samaria and under the ends of the earth. So this experience then of being baptized into the Holy Spirit was going to bring about this ability, this, this power to be a witness for Jesus. Let me ask you a question. If you had the opportunity of, of having someone work for you to serve, to serve God, 
Wouldn't you want one of the disciples? You couldn't get a better person to do the works of God than the disciples. They'd walked with Jesus. They'd heard his teaching. They'd seen the miracles being done. Many of them had gone out at Jesus' command and also done miracles. They would be far more effective people to have than someone who had a degree from a, a theological college. And yet, Jesus wouldn't let them go and do the work. He said that they would be his witnesses, but, but not yet. There was something that they needed. Something that was more important than having walked with Jesus. Or seen the miracles take place. It was them being baptized in the Spirit of God. You see, God has made available to us as believers the, the wonder of the Spirit of God on the inside of us. And every time we become, everyone who becomes a Christian receives the Holy Spirit. He comes to us as a comforter. And as a teacher, and many wonderful things are done in our lives by the Spirit. And yet, there's another encounter with the Holy Spirit that Jesus wanted the disciples to have. Which would clothe them with power. So in Luke 24 and verse 49, Jesus said, I'm going to send you what my Father promised. But stay in the city until you've been clothed with power from on high. So this thing that John the Baptist was prophesying about, that Jesus would baptize people in the Holy Spirit, was a way of the people being clothed with power that came from God. And so there are people who put their faith in Jesus. And they have received, obviously, the Holy Spirit inside them. Because if we don't have the Spirit, then we don't belong to God. And yet they're often feeling very powerless. They're not clothed with power from on high. And so God has made available for us an opportunity to encounter the Holy Spirit in a much more powerful way. And so people would suggest that you receive the Holy Spirit when you are a believer and you get salvation. And then you look for that experience of receiving power by being baptized in the Spirit. That's how it was for the disciples. Now, Jesus is an interesting case to look at in terms of the ministry of the Spirit. The Bible tells us that people are made up of a body, a soul, and a spirit. So, what spirit would have been inside Jesus? It had to be the Spirit of God. Jesus had the Spirit of God within him from the moment he was conceived. Jesus 
And yet Jesus himself didn't do any ministry until the Holy Spirit came down upon him. In order for Jesus to go and do all those miracles he did in the three and a half years, he needed to be anointed by the Holy Spirit. And so too we as believers in Jesus have the Holy Spirit. And we can receive an anointing by the Spirit of God. That empowers us to go and work the works of God. Now let's have a look at the things then that would happen inside a Christian because the Holy Spirit is there with us. Paul the Apostle spent a lot of time explaining about the things of the Spirit. And in 1 Corinthians 12 verses 4 to 6 he has an interesting explanation. He says that there are various gifts. But they all come from the same Holy Spirit. He says there are different ways to serve. But it is the same Lord Jesus who is served. He says there are different workings. But the same God is at work in them all. So in our Christian journey in the life of the church, God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit work together. And one of the wonderful things that comes to us by the Holy Spirit is the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians, Galatians 5, 22 and 23 tell us these fruits. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy and peace. It's forbearance and kindness and goodness. Faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. These are wonderful things to have growing inside your life. So once you become a Christian and the Holy Spirit has come inside you, these fruits are going to begin to grow. People often find that their personality has changed dramatically. There is patience and kindness that just wasn't there before. They're able to love others and care about them when they couldn't do that before. So that's a wonderful thing for us to receive by the Spirit of God. But then as we go to serve God, the Holy Spirit provides us a whole bunch of gifts. We understand that these are the things that come to somebody after they have been baptized in the Spirit. This is expressions of the power that comes from on high. So let's have a look at the list that Paul gives us in 1 Corinthians 12, 8 to 10. He says there is a word of wisdom. This is a revelation from God of the wise thing to do in a situation. He says there is the word of knowledge. This is where the Spirit of God sovereignly reveals to someone something they shouldn't know. Then there is the gift of faith. 
where a person suddenly feels that they've got the faith to go and fight the enemy when before they were afraid. And then there are the gifts of healing. And then there's the working of miracles. There is prophetic utterance where people inspired by God can speak what God is saying to somebody. This is also the gift of identifying spirits. That's often very helpful when you, you know that something's wrong and you don't understand what it is that the enemy is doing. And a person with this gift can turn around and say, it's a spirit of jealousy. Somebody is operating in unforgiveness. And then there are the gifts of being able to speak languages that you've never learned. And another gift that goes with that, which is to interpret what other people are saying. Now, these are all things done by the Spirit of God so that people can go out and work the works of God. And Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 12 verse 7 that these gifts are not given so that people can say, oh, I've got this gift. But it's for the good of all. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given. It's given for the common good. Praise God. The Holy Spirit is available to us to work beautiful work inside us and to empower us to do wonderful things for God. Now, through the thread of Scripture, we discover that the giving of the Holy Spirit has been a, a great objective of God's right back from the beginning. God promised to Abraham that all of the families in the, in the whole of the earth will be blessed through him. And we would say, surely, that's because Jesus, who descended from Abraham, he would, he would pay for our sins and we'd, we'd be able to be adopted into God's family. But when Paul actually revisited that in Galatians chapter 3 verse 4, he, he, he linked that promise with the Holy Spirit. He said, He redeemed us in order that the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles. Through Christ Jesus. He said that so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. He didn't say that through faith we would be forgiven. But we are forgiven because of our faith. He didn't say that through faith we'd be adopted into God's family. But through our faith we are adopted into God's family. He said that through faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. So God's plan all the way along was to pour the Spirit of God upon us. God wants to see you completely filled with the Spirit of God.
being forgiven of our sins and made right with God, prepares the way so that we can receive the Holy Spirit. Now I don't have time to go through all the wonderful things the Holy Spirit brings. But you might like to take note of the Bible verses I'm about to show you. And have a look at these things yourself. Jesus said the Holy Spirit would be our comforter. That's in John 14:16. He talked about the Holy Spirit connecting us in with family. He said the Spirit of God inside us cries out to God, Daddy, Father. That's in Galatians 4, verse 6. And the Holy Spirit is our source of power. As Jesus said in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. He's the first deposit of our inheritance. That we find that in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 14. Jesus said the Holy Spirit would be our teacher. In John 14:26. And the Apostle Peter said that we would be sanctified or made right by the Spirit. That's in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. So wonderfully the Holy Spirit is doing a bunch of different things inside us and for us. In, in fact, you can't get that many wonderful things happening inside you by any other means. Truly the most wonderful thing we can experience along with being forgiven of our sins is to receive the Holy Spirit. That's why we're told, be filled with the Spirit. That's why Jesus said to his disciples, it's better that I go away. Because if I go back to heaven, I will send the Holy Spirit. That's why John the Baptist prophesied about Jesus. Not that he would die on the cross and pay for our sins. But that he would baptize us in the Holy Spirit. So as we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. The day when the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the church. Let me encourage you. Jesus wants you filled with the Spirit. God's promise and God's gift, God's blessing is that you have the Holy Spirit fully inside you. Jesus would like to pick you up and just dip you into the Holy Spirit. He, God wants you to be filled and filled to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. Jesus even said that out of your innermost being there would be a, a river flowing. And the record says he was talking about the Holy Spirit. So, there is so much for you to enjoy as you encounter the Spirit of Almighty God. Now, I know that I've talked about the gifts of the Spirit being there for people who go out and minister in Jesus' name. But the Apostle Paul talked about the wonderful things that can happen when just we encounter the Spirit of God. Paul 
Să se te duh. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 4. Paul talks about praying with the Holy Spirit. He said that he that prays with the Holy Spirit builds himself up. And then the Apostle Jude mentioned the same thing. In verse 20 of Jude he says that praying in the Spirit builds up our faith. And so there's these wonderful gifts and capacities that we enjoy by the Spirit of God. Friends, you are not on your own. You've put your faith in Jesus. And Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. So you could feel a little bit like someone sent off to some distant place to serve your boss way back home. But Jesus sent the Holy Spirit with you. He said the Spirit of God is with you. And He will be in you. And now we have the Holy Spirit inside us. So we're not abandoned and left on our own. God's Holy Spirit is inside us. And then on top of that, we can continually be filled with the Spirit. We can walk in the Spirit. We can pray in the Spirit. We can be led by the Spirit. We can use the gifts of the Spirit. We can enjoy the fruit of the Spirit. We can really understand God as our Daddy through the Spirit. Praise God, Christianity is not a religion. It's not our job to simply turn up a church and sing the hymns and read the Bible. We are not called upon to do a whole bunch of religious duties and to do them correctly. We come into relationship with God. And we do that through Jesus. Because at Passover, Jesus died for our sins. He became the Passover lamb for us. And by putting our faith in Jesus, all of our sins are forgiven. The power of sin and the power of death is broken. The devil has no more power over us. We are God's child heading to eternity with Him. But then there's the work of the Holy Spirit on top of all of that. Now in this era of the Holy Spirit, the church age, you and I get to journey through life with the Holy Spirit. He is our comforter and our companion. He is our teacher. He leads us in God's ways. He awakens our conscience and, and causes us to make the right choices. He causes to come out from us things that were not normal for us before. Beautiful fruit that, that maybe we had never done before. And then he clothes us with power. Equipping us with gifts and capacities that are, are supernatural. 
mi dava razni darovi, razni sposobnosti so that we can go and work the works of God. Za da možemo da odemo napred i da obršimo delo kod Božje. So friends, you already have the Holy Spirit. Tako prijatelji, vi go imate već sveti od Duh. But we are meant to stir up the Spirit. No, isto tako nije treba da go razbudeme ovo Duh u nas. To be filled with the Spirit. Da bideme ispolniti su Duhu. To ask God for the Holy Spirit. Da pobarame od Boga za sveti od Duh and to press in for more and more of what God has for us. So today as we celebrate the giving of the Holy Spirit, I urge you to open your heart and to say, God, do you really have the Holy Spirit for me? I know I must have the Holy Spirit because I'm a Christian. But I don't feel like I have much of the fruit or of the gifts of the Spirit. So I ask you, pour out your Spirit upon me. Just like you've done down through the centuries. I want to be filled with the Spirit. I want to see in the Spirit. I want to be led by the Spirit. I want to be empowered by the Spirit. I want to know the joy of knowing you intimately. Which your Holy Spirit opens up within me. I want the love of God poured out in my heart by the Holy Spirit. So come and fill me with your Spirit. Let me have all of the inheritance you have for me. Let me have all the joy that you have for me. Let me know all of the peace, love and joy that the Holy Spirit can bring. And empower me to be fruitful for you. Especially in seeing your power among my loved ones. Would you like the Holy Spirit to come and fill you? Jesus said that anyone who asked the Father for the Spirit that God will give them the Spirit. So let's pray. Father, we come into your presence and we thank you for the Holy Spirit. We may not fully understand the things of the Spirit. We may not really know how to follow along with the Spirit. But we know it is your desire that we are filled with the Spirit, that we are dipped in the Spirit, that we walk in the Spirit, that we have the fruit and gifts of the Spirit. So, Father, pour out your Spirit upon us. Jesus, we invite you to pick us up and to dip us in the Holy Spirit so that all of those wonderful things you have provided to the believers are ours and a part of our everyday life. Lord, pour out your love upon us. Strengthen our sense of you as our Heavenly Father. Open our eyes to your word. Cause us to have sweet fruit coming out of us all the time. And clothe us with power from on high and allow us to bring forth much fruit for your kingdom. 
We invite you to do all of that through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And we ask for it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you, friends. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. We have wonderful news for those who regularly worship with us at the Macedonian Church, and that is, as of the 7th of June, we are recommencing our services. So on June 7, at 10 a.m., we will have a bilingual service with Macedonian translation, and then we anticipate that at 11.30, we'll have an English service. We need two services because we can only fit 20 people into each service. So if you would like to be involved in either service, you must book your place by phoning John Isev on 0499-043-816. And wonderfully, on Saturday, June 27 at 6 p.m., Sash Kerstich will once again be presenting our monthly Bible study. Once again, that's at the church, and you're welcome to come and join us there. God bless you.